Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. Trey Lance is now a Dallas Cowboy, but how are the 49ers feeling about that haul that they gave up to draft him back in 2021? Also, the Broncos absolutely dominant in their final preseason game, and the Dolphins reminded that some things are bigger than football. I'm Kanani Stevens, and for Peter Bukowski, and this is Locked On Sports Today. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The Dallas Cowboys acquired Trey Lance over the weekend for some Dak Prescott insurance. The Dallas Cowboys shocked the NFL world by trading for quarterback Trey Lance. Hi, I'm Lana McCool with the Locked On Cowboys podcast and the Dallas Cowboys trade a 2024 fourth round pick to the San Francisco 49ers for former number three overall pick Trey Lance from North Dakota State. Uh, th- this is a situation where the Cowboys wanted to get better. They wanted to improve in their backup quarterback situation clearly and wanted to find someone that could potentially uh, provide them some uh, upside in the future, someone that they could develop. Mike McCarthy is obviously known for that and they're able to trade for a quarterback quarterback on a buy low situation where he only has six million guaranteed for the next two years uh, and a quarterback that they hope to develop and maybe even get in on some packages early this season near the goal line or, or that sort of thing. So if you want to find out more about this, make sure you check us out on the Locked On Cowboys podcast. And to find out more about your team, check the other podcasts on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Meanwhile, this trade has locked out 49ers hosts Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker feeling some type of way. You can spin it any way you want, but ultimately a a massive failure and a massive disaster uh, when it comes to the the trading and drafting and maneuvering and development of one Trey Lance. You know, my initial thought was, well, they got a fourth for him. (laughs) You know, I I was expecting a, a fifth or a sixth or like a conditional pick or something along those lines, but it was a straight up fourth round pick for next year's draft. So, not not terrible. I mean, obviously, and you know, when you factor in what they gave up to get them, it's terrible. And there's no good way to kind of spin that aspect of it. But in a situation where, hey, we just named this guy our third string quarterback and you're able to get a fourth round pick for him, I think that's the part where it's like, eh, not bad, all things being considered. So you're hyped on it. You're hyped on the fourth round pick. <laughs> no, <laughs> I I'm I'm hyped on the fact that oh, okay, they got something. In return, when I didn't think they would get anything in return, like how, how could you? If yeah. you're a team and you're you're telling us, hey, we don't want this guy, how are you supposed to get anything of value for him? You said that you wanted Brandon Allen, and the way they spoke about it when they were live on TV, it's like I just watched Brandon Allen. You can't tell me Brandon Allen is better than Trey Lance. I just watched Sam Darnold, and we've talked a lot about. You know, Sam Darnold, and he doesn't have quite the lows. Well, tonight he started having some of those lows mixed in with a splash play to Conley. But it it was kind of a weird game for everyone, and I don't think the way that the backup quarterbacks played made a good case for why you should have gotten rid of Trey Lance. It's uh, we, we've talked a lot about Trey Lance and we kind of knew the writing was on the wall as soon as he wasn't the backup quarterback. Um, Kyle had some interesting things to say. John had some interesting things to say here about the whole Trey Lance situation. Um, one nugget from Kyle, though, post game was that and I know you're doing something else, Croc, and I don't think you heard it. But Kyle said that it was a it was a group effort. Basically, this was Trey saying that he wanted out and his agent and the team and everybody kind of worked together to find a landing spot for him and some more teams came stronger today. And that was the Dallas Cowboys with a better offer that made it palatable for the 49ers to trade Trey. And, you know, uh, and apparently Trey was amenable to going to the Dallas Cowboys. And when I think about the landing spot for the Dallas Cowboys, um, it's a weird one because of the the rivalry for the 49ers. Right. And th- that could be, you know, there's, we had talked about how, Oh man, don't want to end up in Seattle or, 
Los Angeles Rams, if he's cut, you know, good coaching staff and, and, you know, division rivals, but this is like next on the list with the Dallas Cowboys. And for some 49ers fans, even more hated than those inner in division rivals. Um, and, and, but they have a, a veteran quarterback that at least in the near future is not going anywhere. So the, uh, there's no better opportunity for Trey to play with the Dallas Cowboys really than the San Francisco 49ers, unless he climbs up the depth chart to that backup spot and there's an injury to Dak, but that's the same as it would have been just about uh, anywhere else, including San Francisco. No, well, San Francisco had him as the third string quarterback. Well, I mean, he's not going to walk in and be the backup tomorrow. Stay up to date all year on the San Francisco 49ers by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On 49ers on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Sports Today your first listen. Coming up, the Broncos ended the preseason on a good note. Before we get there, though, the Bears made a cut in their quarterback room. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and then they will get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket for YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. You can also jump into the daily MLB action. The Cubs and Brewers begin a pivotal series in the NL Central Division race. The Cubs are favored to win the first game of the series. FanDuel has the North Siders at minus 120 on the money line. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer that you don't want to miss. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. The Chicago Bears released backup quarterback P.J. Walker on Sunday. The 28-year-old Walker signed a two-year contract worth $4.15 million in March with over $2 million in guarantees. After three seasons with the Carolina Panthers, Walker was brought in to compete for the backup quarterback job behind Justin Fields. Walker struggled throughout the preseason and he did not get into Chicago's third exhibition game, a 24-21 loss to Buffalo on Saturday until the fourth quarter. The backup job will now be a competition between Nathan Peterman and undrafted rookie Tyson Bejent. Bejent was the first quarterback to follow Fields in the final preseason game. The Pittsburgh Steelers are sending former fourth round pick Kevin Dotson to the LA Rams. The Steelers acquired the Rams 2024 fourth round pick and 2025 fifth round pick, while the Rams received the Steelers 2024 fifth round pick and 2025 sixth round pick. Dotson started all 17 games for the Steelers at left guard last season, but he was bumped from the 2023 starting lineup when the team acquired former Philadelphia Eagles offensive lineman Isaac Sayamalo in free agency. The Yankees and Rays had a tumultuous matchup that ended up in a Tampa win. Things got testy down in Tropicana Field between the Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and the bench is cleared twice in one inning because the Yankees pitching was hitting too many people on Tampa's side. And uh, in the season series, which mercifully ended on Sunday for the Yankees, the Yankees hit 12 Rays batters and the Rays only hit two Yankees batters in all those games. So, yeah, I understand from the Rays standpoint, you get sick and tired of getting hit. But I also understand from the Yankees standpoint, they're not purposely hitting these guys. They're just not pitching well. So the Yankees drop another series. They drop their eighth rubber game in a row. The Yankees actually had a chance to win the series and they were leading in Sunday's game and then they blew it, which is the theme of 2023. So we discuss the game, discuss the brawl. It's Miners Monday. It's a jam packed show. So tune in. The Chicago Cubs absolutely destroyed the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cubs completed another good weekend in Pittsburgh this weekend, closing out the series with a 10-1 victory at PNC. Javier Assad continues to be one of the bright stories for the Chicago Cubs starting rotation. He threw a gem today, and the Cubs hit. Seiya Suzuki hit. Bellinger drove in five. Cubs won three out of four in Pittsburgh, completed a very successful and solid 5-2 and two road trip. Unfortunately, while they went 5-2, and two, the Milwaukee Brewers did not lose a game. I believe they've won eight in a row now and they will be coming into Wrigley Field for a massive three-game set beginning Monday night. Cubs beat Pittsburgh 10-1. to Big series tomorrow against the Brewers. And the Astros put up 17 runs on Detroit. 
Well, the Houston Texans defeat the Detroit Lions 17 to 4. Wait, that's the wrong sport. This is baseball. I forgot. While the Astros defeat the Tigers 17 to 4, they had 25 hits, which was the fifth time they have done this in their franchise. You're hoping that they'll get that uh, 26 hit. Uh, you, you had, you're facing uh, two position players at the end of the game, but uh, the Astros did a great job with uh, supporting Justin Verlander in this game, who went five shutout innings. He would have gone deeper in this game, but he had an inning where he logged 31 pitches but uh, Jeremy Pena with a five hit game and after the game he was trying to give Jose Altuve some crap and Altuve basically said look kid when you get to 2,000 hits, you can come back and talk to me. Otherwise, uh, congrats. But you had a lot of people get some hits today, including Tucker with the big home run, give them the lead early. And we'll talk about this and more on the next Locked On Astros. The Denver Broncos firing on all cylinders in their final preseason game. Locked On Broncos hosts Cody Rourke and Sarah Bettinger break down the win. What did you just tell me before we started the show they were doing out there on Saturday night? Uh, Cody? They're getting stiddy, right? Yeah, they're, they're, getting, they're getting stiddy with it. And that, that was just something, you know, stiddy. hopefully the Broncos won't have to rely on that in the regular season. But, you know, we just it was the preseason, perfect opportunity. Jared Stidham was getting stiddy with it as the Broncos, they roll the Rams. I love it, man. And getting stiddy with it out there, you know, and just just like Will Smith. I mean, Will Smith to Chris Rock, the Broncos slapped the Los Angeles Rams in the face in this preseason game in Denver. The first game with all the upgrades at the stadium, right? You got to see the big video board out there. I don't know how much you guys got to go look through all the other amenities. And so, did you have a five dollar box of popcorn, Cody? Did you, did you get no. to enjoy that? No. Well, that's all right. So I'm sure some of the Rams players did as they watched the Broncos win this game 41 to nothing. Thanks largely to what felt like a full game worth of work from Jarrett Stidham in that first half, right? I mean, the Broncos were dominating throughout the first half offensively. It felt exactly like I expected it to feel. This is why I've been so hard on Jarrett Stidham in the preseason, Cody, because when we signed him and what we've heard about him through the offseason, This is the guy that I expected out there, a guy who is playing with backups in the preseason but looks more like a starter. Jarrett Stidham was balling. It wasn't just that he was, you know, getting the ball out quickly, the receivers are doing work. He's throwing darts out there. His 20-yard scramble, uh, Eli Manning-esque, if I do say, getting out of that pressure and making that 20-yard gain happen. It was an awesome performance from him, especially as we get to the regular season now where we need to have that confidence in the back of our mind that he can go out there and play well. And that's the thing we wanted to have answered, right? Because after the first preseason game, we were were trying to figure out, like, you know, Stidham didn't look as sharp, right? I think he was 5 of 15 passing in that game for 50 yards and an interception. We are like, wait, you know, he just doesn't look doesn't look right in a sense from what we've seen so far in like OTAs and preseason to that point. But man, this is a guy who I think in the last two games, last week we saw it against the 49ers. What did he start off? I think he was like nine for nine to start that game there or something like that. Well, he was mm-hmm. six for six to start this game and 89 yards so far through the first quarter. He ended up finishing the game 17 of 28 passing. 236 yards and a touchdown pass to Albert Okwebunam, who we had talked about as a player to watch. But you mentioned that as well. Like, it was a third down play, and pressure is barreling around him. I thought uh, the nickel corner I thought was going to sack Stidham. He does a great job dipping underneath it and running for 20 yards. Like, that type of play kept the drive alive. And look, the Broncos in this game, Sarah, offensively, 33 first downs on the evening on 80 plays. 33 first downs on 80 total offensive plays that was as of an efficient of a performance on the offensive side of the ball you can have. But to your point, you saw Stidham look comfortable. You saw him command the offense, be decisive. His ball placement, I thought, was pretty dang good. And, man, he had one shot downfield. Really exciting early on to Marvin Mims for 50 yards. Took a shot, like got speared and was down for a little bit. Had to come out for a play. He had that poise. He had that moxie that you want to see in a guy who, hey, if you have to call on this guy in the regular season to back, like to come in and play for your quarterback if he gets hurt or if he gets benched, I thought Stidham showed some things inside the structure of Sean Payton's offense that gives me a little bit of confidence say, okay, hey, this is a guy who can do it. And that first preseason game that we saw, I'm starting to now think like, okay, hey, that was just the first game jitters for everybody because the, the Broncos all around, they looked very, very good in this game. 
Coming up, the Dolphins were reminded that some things are bigger than football. The Miami Dolphins final preseason game against the Jacksonville Jaguars was cut short on Saturday. Locked on Dolphins host Kyle Krabs looks back on the events of the game. And nights like tonight are nights where uh, hopping on and talking about a football game can be kind of tough. Uh, because the Dolphins did have a preseason game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, that game was suspended with about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter with the score Jacksonville 31 to 18. And none of it really feels relevant. Uh, when a player, Miami Dolphins receiver Daywood Davis, is caught in the head on an in-breaking route and knocked, presumably knocked unconscious on the field, had to be stretchered off. Now, the team did provide a update uh, for wide receiver Daywood Davis that he was transported to a local medical facility. He is conscious and he has movement in all extremities. So hoping for uh, continued good news on the front of Daywood Davis, but wanted to, at the top of a show that's supposed to be about football when football it really makes you take a step back and look at the big picture uh the first thing i wanted to do on today's show was uh send my best wishes uh to david davis and, and hope that uh he is back to uh his typical self as quickly as possible mike mcdaniel offered some some really insightful words on daywood and the the player and the person that he is as he's uh, kind of embarked on this journey with the dolphins throughout the course of this offseason so sending our best uh to daywood davis and um we'll try and talk about this football game and i'll, I'll try to uh, br bring a little bit of energy here uh because i think there's there's plenty of good and plenty of bad from a football perspective for the Dolphins. And I think the first good storyline that I have is this. If you're going to look at this from a, a big picture uh, standpoint, and I know we'll do some other big picture conversations here towards the end of the show. Uh, this game didn't tell me anything in my mind that I didn't think that I already felt about this Dolphins team. I think this was a great uh, confirmation of suspicions that we had. The running back room is deep. Savon Ahmed ripped off another big run. Chris Brooks running really hard. And this was without uh, Devon A-Chain and no Jeff Wilson as well. He still had positive performers. Uh, I, I think the wide receiver depth really stood out throughout the course of this game. River Craycraft making a case to make the 53-man roster. In a situation like this, especially in a preseason matchup, I think both teams did the right thing as to whether there will be any ruling on this going forward about these kinds of decision. We'll have to wait and see. And finally, Lewis Lappy got to experience something on Sunday that every Little League player dreams of. He hit a walk-off home run to win the game 6-5 and take home the Little League Baseball World Series Championship. Lewis flipped his bat through his arms in the air as he trotted around the bases, leaping onto home plate as he was greeted by his teammates surrounding the batter's box. The leadoff hitter in the bottom of the sixth inning, Lewis lofted the second pitch he saw just beyond the left field fence. It was the first trip to the final for the team from El Segundo, a community in the LA area. California's eight titles are the most by any U.S. state. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast. Make that your second listen. Coming up tomorrow, will there be any surprises from cut down day in the NFL? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.